Denver couldn't be here today because of a fragile condition. She asked me to be here uh, to get some questions asked, and also we passed out a press release just indicating she couldn't be here. It looks like the three, and she wanted to also indicate that while you and your office have closure on the investigation part of it, she certainly has no closure on this case as there are a lot of questions that remain unanswered, not necessarily from your office, but from Leroy and, and the court system and that. But it looks like the first three hours of the Amber Alert are crucial, and you, in, by your own indication, you express concern for a statement just now at 6 p.m. on Monday the 9th, at which the Amber Alert was broadcast that you had concern at that time. Do you regret not having expressed those same concerns in that first three hour period when you knew how, how crucial that was based on your background? And why wasn't that criteria that was missing, why wasn't it provided within those first three hours? Because um, in your experience, you would have known that that's what they would have needed. You may have a discrepancy in your statement, comment, or question. Um, the first three hours that are most critical is the first three hours of the investigation. And which would have been the first three hours on Sunday evening, March 8th. At that point, you weren't involved yet. No. Have you been contacted at all? <coughs> Had Leroy contacted our, the sheriff's office? Uh, our first involvement in the actual case came at 11.35 Sunday evening when Leroy Police Department um, arrived here at the Sheriff's Department and had their Amber Alert ready to be faxed. And at that time, um, we, the death sergeant faxed the Amber Alert from here uh, to the State Communications Center. That was our first <coughs> initial involvement in this case. Did they have to come here to fax it? Or could they have done that? From I think that they were in town and they knew that we would provide that to them. Uh, they had um, been in town because they had previously searched for Michael's vehicle in the area. I think it was a one, one and a half mile radius around Michael's apartment and also had conducted a, uh, a check the well-being uh, at the apartment for the boys. So they were in town and we were the closest uh, agency for them to stop in and, and fax that uh, Amber Alert. Do you feel it took too long for them to bring the Sheriff's Office into this? Uh, the Sheriff's Office is available to any of our law enforcement agencies uh, for assistance at 11.35 that evening, our desk sergeant did offer assistance, but at that time, uh, the two Leroy officers that had stopped in uh, to fax the Amber Alert had uh, stated that they were getting the investigation uh, moving, uh, and that was uh, evidenced by the fact that they had already completed the Amber Alert application. They had utilized the Bloomington Police Department to assist them in this search. Uh, so uh, I don't think that they were not investigating this case. I, I, I fully believe that uh, they were taking what steps they felt were necessary uh, to get this investigation started uh, from the Leroy Police Department. So in the chain of command thing, then, as the McLean County Sheriff, you said you were an unattached person in this case. When do you decide to become an attached person in this case? And do you wish, wish you would have become attached sooner? Well, I think maybe you also misinterpreted that, Ms. Michael. Um, to put it back in context so that there's no confusion <clears throat> that leaves the room here, when I said unattached, it was specifically in reference to all the past cases. We didn't handle, at the Sheriff's Office, any of those past cases uh, or involvement in this ordeal. So that comment was specific to the case reports. I had not had personal involvement in this case. As an outsider reviewing 
all the cases is when I became um, involved in the review process and the history uh, of this case. So in the chain of command, are you not the Leroy Police Chief's boss? Is the mayor his boss? I'm not understanding the chain of command. I believe in Leroy's chain of command, the city manager is his, yeah. his boss, yes. I do not have any authority, direct authority over any police chief. Going back Saturday night, 7.30, the last known uh, whereabouts of Michael Connolly. What was the nature, do you know, of uh, his conversation with uh, Michelle? And do you know what the uh, whereabouts of uh, Jack and Duncan were at that time? No. Um, again, he uh, had left a message on Michelle's phone that he had called. I don't have the information specific to if he had left any type of information. Okay. okay. So you had said that you mentioned working harder to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. What needs to be done? What, what do you think that entails? Well, this is a very complicated case with many uh, variables. Uh, although law enforcement is trained in the investigation of uh, abducted children. Uh, <clears throat> what um, what I found, uh, and, and I'll speak for the uh, task force members, uh, is that there are a lot of agencies with resources available uh, for when a case like this does happen. I had mentioned earlier that I was thanking uh, Team Adam and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, the technology and the assistance that is available on the national level, uh, awareness of those resources, and the utilization of those resources, uh, knowing the fact that when there is a case of this nature, that Team Adam will dispatch uh, volunteers through the National Center to join your task force so that they have a direct representative here or on site to um, utilize those resources. Uh, what is out there is overwhelming and uh, their service and assistance and technology is uh, it's there to support law enforcement in these types of cases. Is this now a closed case? Yes, this case is now closed. Uh, I will tell you that again with the um, Putnam County Coroner's report and the investigation uh, and the evidence was conclusive. Uh, again, one person is responsible for the death of Jack and Duncan, and that is Michael Connolly. So, folks, I have to conclude. I hope that I've been able to address most of your issues uh, and answer questions. And I, again, I thank you. Uh, for attending today. Thank you very much.